Hey guys, uh, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about uh, the MIMO channel estimation, the continuation from the previous uh, video. Um, in the previous video, mainly we were talking about uh, one of the scenarios or one of the configurations uh, for which we can estimate uh, the MIMO channel. Uh, in this video, we will see uh, some other configuration which is possible from 3GPP. Okay, so I just want to uh, recap what was done in the previous video because uh, based on that uh, we can connect uh, uh, the concept for the uh, next configuration. So mainly, uh, you know, initially we tried with uh, uh, some configurations of DMRS allocations uh, in this fashion across antenna 1 and antenna 2 where we wanted to allocate the same uh, resource elements or same um, subcarriers across both antenna 1 and antenna 2 and even we wanted to transmit the same, same DMRS samples okay in this case uh, we got the equations for the first subcarrier across both the antennas even on uh, the third subcarrier across both the antennas and we were trying to estimate the channel uh, but uh, with least squares uh, uh, we found that uh, you know um, this particular matrix is not invertible okay uh, that's why we could not use such a kind of configuration that's what we concluded um, so I will, I will come to this point but uh, but uh, what what could be the feasible solution so when we thought about it and uh, and you know we, we came across uh, one configuration from this web spec uh, that is you know on antenna 1 you allocate the DMRS samples on hot subcarriers whereas on the antenna 2 you allocate uh, in the even subcarriers with this if I take the equations on first subcarrier across both the antennas and second subcarrier across both the antennas and if I try to form the equations and this is what I was getting and with least square solution we were able to get the inverse of this matrix X and and uh, and we were able to estimate the channel right so this was one configuration um, i just want to show uh, for this configuration you know what has been specified in the so in section 6.4 actually it is 38211 version 15.8 so reference signals we have dmrs for pvsch so base sequence okay we can generate using this sequence let's say uh, this is sufficient for now to understand that is r of n you can you, you can say r of n now after r of n is generated now we have one more section what is called as pre-coding and uh, mapping to physical resources so how exactly we should map to physical resources is the point so the equations has been given over here on how to map it mm, for now in a in uh, for now till now we had considered uh, you know there is no term okay there is no term uh, in fact, I will try to get the marker uh, yeah there is no term okay this term is not there even this term is not there only uh, this particular term was there okay which is this is actually r of uh, 2n plus k dash and we are basically considering configuration type 1 so based on this okay so if i go to the table and if i see uh, you know the configurations which we considered was let's say port 0 okay port 0 both are 1 1 that's where you know we will we are not considering this one even this we can say 1 1 okay then alternate right so this is the one which represents the alternate subcarrier so corresponding to port 0 port 2 is the one where you know it will talk about the shift in the subcarrier or allocation across um, even subcarrier so this also 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 okay so now port 0 and port 2 is the configuration which uh, uh, we actually spoke about uh, uh, in this particular case okay so this was related to port uh, 0 and this was related to port 2 if we assign such a kind of uh, ports then we will get this configuration and we will be able to do the channel estimation that's all fine 
okay now i will get back to the non working case okay in this case uh, uh, you know it was first circuited we got this equation okay from here we wrote uh, it in a vector form uh, here itself uh, it looks like okay we can estimate this 2 cross 2 channel matrix but uh, uh, definitely not because you can even try to apply g square uh, at this point okay so it will be like this is x bar right so then the least squares will be like x bar x bar armesian then we need x bar x bar armesian whole inverse okay mm, so we can say this is not there so x bar armesian into x bar x bar armesian whole inverse this should be applied to your y bar okay so definitely this x bar x bar armesian this is this will become non invertible you can try out for this particular vector you will get to know this is non invertible mm, and anyway for this uh, you i mean um, from the literature of channel estimation okay here i want to mention one important aspect so i will say uh, you know the literature of channel estimation which means that uh, if you try to go through many IEEE papers and uh, if you try to get the concept of channel estimation, there are many things proposed. Okay, so there the thing is that if you want to estimate the channel edge, which is of uh, two cross two, basically if it if it has got uh, two columns, then definitely you need uh, you know the columns of this. Uh, pilot matrix x to be uh, columns to be greater than or equal to 2 okay so in this case there is only one column and this is not sufficient so un understanding this uh, actually you know we try to utilize one more subcarrier and we try to uh, you know pack it uh, in a matrix form where we had uh, two columns okay um, but this was still not sufficient because we wanted some more criteria to be satisfied uh, that is uh, these columns of this matrix x should be independent and and they should be such a way that uh, um, if they are orthogonal then it will produce the op optimal channel estimates so that is what is actually you know um, you know that is what is actually derived in many papers uh, in, uh, in in the in the literature um, you can go through so one point is that um, estimate and uh, the second one is the x matrix uh, uh, should be uh, should have orthogonal columns okay uh, basically that will that will ensure that, that they are sufficiently independent the columns are independent okay so based on this um, Based on this, uh, we need to proceed for channel estimation. Okay, uh, but uh, those uh, we satisfied one condition, but the other condition we did not satisfy. Your columns are not orthogonal to each other. That's why when we try to apply the least square, we saw that uh, uh, we saw that uh, mm, you know this x into x submission whole inverse it was uh, not invertible, and we were not able to proceed further. Right. But if you take uh, the configuration which was working here, if you see, uh, you know the the x matrix whatever we got here, here we had uh, sufficient columns and also each column was orthogonal to each other and that's why you know uh, we were able to estimate it. So on a similar lines, now the 3GPP has defined uh, one more uh, parameter. Okay. Um, so what it says is that. Let's say if you want to allocate the DMRS or symbols or samples across the same subcarriers uh, on both antenna 1 and antenna 2, if you want to do that in this way, then you need to multiply with one more uh, um, factor that is what is called as uh, OCC, orthogonal cover code. Okay. So since uh, this orthogonal cover code uh, is applied across uh, the frequency um, domain or across subcarriers, uh, this is called as frequency domain orthogonal cover code. Okay, so if you, if you look at this uh, particular matrix, right, 
how to ensure that the columns are orthogonal just say for example if i you know go for multiplication with minus uh, minus 1 here to the x2 that would be sufficient right so um, what do we need to do is um, in this uh, pre coding and uh, you know mapping of physical resources um, we, we will not come to this uh, uh, this is time domain occ uh, factor we will not come to this we can say it as one for now this we were not considering but now let us say we will consider this okay this is the frequency domain occ frequency domain occ so this we need to utilize okay uh, now as per the table what it says is uh, this is the one okay uh, so now till now we considered all our plus one plus one right now we need to consider port zero where it is you know plus one plus one whereas in case of port one uh, we are going to allocate on same subcarriers across the antennas but uh, uh, you know you know this OCC uh, OCC will ensure that on first subcarrier it is plus one whereas on second subcarrier it is minus one is multiplied so that's exactly uh, you know this x2 will be multiplied by minus one okay in all other cases it is multiplied by one one and one so that's where you know if we actually mm, rearrange these equations uh, we will get uh, something like this okay i will just try to write the final equation at this point in time so we have matrix y this is 2 cross 2 okay um, then we have then and then basically you know uh, you know x um, x um, how, how to perform this okay x are mission right so this is uh, the least square so if you see this x into x are mission um, so let's try to calculate that okay x into x submission x1 x1 with mod of x1 square minus uh, x2 square yeah yeah i think this is uh, correct only uh, so here i will get mod of um, I, I will get a only i'm writing for sake of simplicity here uh, here you know this one actually will become zero because mod of x1 square is one only right because our dmrs uh, uh, the, the the dmrs selections are such a way that uh, it is of the power of e to the power of j phi right so here we have magnitude one so uh, this is going to give one this is also going to give one so it is zero zero so definitely you know um, so th this is going to become um, we can take this a common then this is going to be one zero zero one right so this is invertible uh, and and uh, and that's how you know um, we were able to recover the channel okay i hope uh, you got the clarity uh, with frequency domain occ how we are able to estimate the channel okay this is uh, another configuration which we saw um, so like this even we have something called time domain occ okay to ensure that uh, we can even um, we can even utilize more number of uh, orthogonal uh, ports um, for uh, for even you know multi-user MIMO case multi-user MIMO applications uh, and and even for uh, more layers we just saw two layers right even if you want to go for a four layer MIMO uh, then also we can go for more number of uh, ports so um, with this uh, I want to wind up this video I hope you got the clarity I hope you got to, uh, to know how to use, uh, how, I mean, what is the use of this frequency domain OCC, how that is going to help uh, uh, to perform the channel estimation in case of uh, uh, MIMO. Um, so, thank you very much. If you're looking for more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.